8, 9, 10. Well, welcome. I'm Dr. David Winter with Healthy Hangout, a production of Baylor Healthcare System. We're here today to talk about the flu. Some myths, we want to dispel those. We want to talk about some options with flu shots. What is the flu? What is not the flu? Joining me are my good friends, Dr. Roger and Rainer Caton, both board certified internal medicine specialists at Baylor University Medical Center in downtown Dallas. Welcome, guys. Uh, let me ask you a question to start off with. First, the flu is coming. It's the flu season. But also, as you know, this time of year, there's some upper respiratory infections, cold viruses, we call them. How do we distinguish between a cold virus and between the flu? Roger, let's start with you. Well, usually one of the biggest things with just the cold viruses is that we think about rhinovirus, adenovirus, the simple colds where your nasal stuffiness, you have the congestion, low-grade fevers just don't feel well, whereas the flu, you really have high-grade fevers. You have the prostration. You're laying flat on the floor. You're having myalgias, arthralgias, and there is a test for the flu, which is some, about 90% uh, sensitive, but about uh, specific, sorry and about maybe 60% sensitive. It's a nasal swab test that we do on some people. It's a rapid flu test to see if they have the flu. Yeah, you know, the problem I have found this time of year, there's a lot of cold viruses going around. And so you give someone a flu shot, good idea. They get a cold. They blame it on the flu shot. Uh, Rainer, help us with that. The flu shot cannot give you the flu. Am I correct? You are correct, sir. Uh, as you and I both know, a lot of patients come in and they say, I've had the flu, and I'll be sitting there going, no, you didn't get the flu from the flu shot. It takes two weeks to build up immunity to the flu shot. Unfortunately, if you get the flu in the meantime, if you get a cold in the meantime, it's not the flu. Uh, you just happen to get a cold in the meantime. You know. I've had people swear the flu shot gave them the flu, but it doesn't give you a cold virus, and you're right, there's a distinction there. As Rainer said, if you have the flu, you know it. You're very much sicker than you are with the cold virus. There's a big distinction right there, but important to dispel that myth, the flu shot will not give you the flu. Right, guys? Correct. Very much so, sir. I mean, one of the things that uh, one of our patients just yesterday and one of yours probably yesterday and Rainer's, they all come in here and we try to convince them of the flu shot, and I sit there and I go, it's a killed vaccine. It is not going to give you the flu whatsoever. And so, it's a lot of debating, and sometimes I think some of the patients that see us, we laugh because we hold their hand and we go, really, I'll give you the flu shot. I'll take mine at the same time. We'll see what goes on. And the big distinction is a cold virus is a big nuisance, but the flu can be deadly. In fact, 35 to 40,000 deaths a year in this country are attributed to influenza. Many of those could be prevented if people got vaccinated. So that's our point today. You should be vaccinated. This is the cold season now. It's coming on. You should get a flu shot. Roger, now, next month, uh, December, when are you recommending? Well, the earlier the better, to be honest, to protect you, especially if you're flying and going to other places. I think vaccination is very important early in the season. We started uh, right in September, and I know most healthcare workers are getting vaccinated this month, October, and you can get it all the way until March, but the earlier the better. While we have the vaccine available, get vaccinated. It's, it's imperative. Yeah, and the flu shot doesn't work right away. Rainer, how long does it take for the antibodies to build up? It takes approximately two weeks for that to occur. And in that two-week period, like we mentioned before, you can get another cold. But during that time period, after two weeks, you are pretty much immunized to the flu. It's not, Nothing's 100% perfect, but it's close. Yeah. Uh-oh. Roger, you got an emergency there? Are you okay? No, no, no. I, it's okay. Thank okay. you. Great. I'm glad you can stay with us today. Now, there's some choices this year with different types of flu shots, different types of, and not just a flu shot, there's a spray also. Let's talk about that. What are the options this year with influenza vaccination? Rainer? Well, there's a couple out there. And uh, as the Mayo Clinic wrote out and the CDC's come out, uh, they're trying to tailor the flu shot to you. And one of the things we saw is the new quadrivalent vaccine that got a lot of press on WFAA and a couple of uh, the other news hangouts. Uh, the quadrivalent vaccine hits two of the influenza type A and two of the influenza type B. The old vaccine and the vaccine that's still most commonly used hits two of the strains of the influenza A vaccine and one of the B. The old vaccine is still very, very good for most people because influenza B really targets mainly children uh, more than adults for some reason uh, in the latest literature. 
But the quadrivalent really does help against both types of vaccine, both types of type B influenza B. And uh, I think that either one, as long as you get a flu shot, will be good for you. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. So the trivalent has three vaccines and the, the quadrivalent, brand new this year, has four. And that fourth influenza strain is most important for the young children and perhaps the very, very old. Would you agree Correct. with that? Correct. Yeah. Correct. I agree totally with that. And the latest data suggests that too. And again, this shot is a dead virus. You can't get that. Uh, you can't get influenza from this shot. Now, there's a nasal spray, though. That's actually a live virus. Tell us about that and who should get that and who should not. The nasal virus is for those people ages usually 2 to 49 who are relatively healthy and are not uh, immunocompromised in any way. Children are really beneficial for that virus, as well as, like I said, the relatively healthy. It's usually recommended ages 2 to 49. There's another variety also out there, came out last year, and this is super high dose flu shot, said to be designed for the elderly. I've heard some mixed reviews about this. Rainer, you want to talk about this high dose flu shot that some folks are saying might be good for the elderly? Yeah, it's, it's uh, been debated, as you and I know at, the, at various levels about the high dose. The high dose is your regular vaccine, but four times the potency. Yeah. Uh, so what it's supposed to do is, in people who are immunocompromised, the, the elderly, the, uh, the really sick, it's supposed to upgrade your immunity right away and cause a better immunity to all these three strains of viruses we were talking about before, the two type A and the one type B. Uh, the pharmaceutical company says it has a 24% increased efficacy. That hasn't been proven out in individual studies yet, but a lot of people really do believe in the high-dose flu vaccine. Yeah, somewhat controversial. Any flu shot's better than no flu shot, of course, so we want to push that indeed. Uh, Rainer, any other thoughts about the vaccination? What are you telling your patients when they ask, which shot should I get? I personally tell them right now, like myself, I'm a relatively healthy guy. I went ahead and just had the regular vaccine. And as long as you get a vaccine, like you said before, as long as you get any type of flu vaccine, you're all right. The high-dose vaccine and the quadrivalent vaccine, you're going to pay a little more. Medicare and most insurance companies will pay for the flu shot, but for the quadrivalent vaccine and the high dose, you will probably pay a little bit more for those, depending on which institution you go to, which pharmacy you go to, because it does cost more to make those. Uh, but in general, as the old theme goes, be wise and immunize. Yeah. I, I like that. It, it can be confusing, so if you are confused as a patient, just ask your physician. They can help lead you to the best shot for you. Roger, let's flip back to you. Now, influenza, uh, I haven't seen a case yet, but we're worried there may be one out there in Dallas County. There was a rumor about that, not confirmed, but we know it's going to come fairly soon. So, Roger, what are you looking for with influenza? And if you think you have influenza, what should you as a patient do? You are correct. We were just looking for, in regards to Dallas County, I know that I was just calling up the Dallas County Health Center yesterday to see if we had any cases. We've tested two people so far for the flu here. What we're looking for is like the nasal congestion, runny nose, productive or maybe even non-productive, harsh coughing, uh, fevers up to maybe 102, 103, just severe myalgias where they just can't get out of bed. They're aching everywhere. Those are the types of symptoms we're looking for. If you suspect you have the flu, we do ask seriously to make sure you're washing your hands cover your mouth when you're coughing. One of the things that a lot of people do is they just cover their hand with this, then they shake hands with someone else. Um, we ask you to like try to cough into your jacket, sleeve, to protect other people from it. Uh, if you have a surgical mask or some mask, once in a while if you're really that ill and you're having a very productive sputum, because it is aerosol um, for inhalational uh, transmission, we do ask that sometimes you wear a mask. And we have some available in some of the offices if someone's coughing in our lobby to put on a mask to prevent them from being contagious to others in the offices or in the hospital waiting rooms. You know, people that tough it out and try to go to work when they have a cold or with influenza, I don't like that. I tell my employees, if you're sick, if you think you're sick, do us a favor, stay home. Don't spread it to us or to other patients in the office. And I think that's a good idea. If you think you're sick, these are very contagious illnesses. Stay home. Take care of the rest of us. Do the rest of us a favor. Oh, I think all of us will agree. Uh, one of the hardest things is even for healthcare workers or those who are very high uh, 
um, ambitious individuals who keep going to work, they are infecting others and then we'll lose more work hours by having those people get spread the virus to other people. What about treatment for influenza? There's medicines for that now. Uh, talk about that if you would, Roger. The most common one that most people use is Tamiflu. It is most effective if you can get it within the first 24 to 48 hours uh, of the symptoms. Otherwise, sometimes the manufacturer will claim that you can give it during any course of the flu, but most people who do very well with it, if you can catch the flu symptoms at the beginning of the infection, 24 to 48 hours, you will see a reduction in your symptoms by about 48 hours. Instead of being sick for about five to seven days, you may be sick for about three to five days. It does cause a little nausea in some people, sometimes a little vomiting, but you sometimes have difficulty using those as symptoms versus what were the uh, symptoms of the flu from you being ill and not wanting to eat. You know, influenza seems to happen about this time of year, and I always wonder what that is. Rainer, why do we see more influenza in the wintertime than the summertime? I don't know. I don't think we know the exact answer, but what are your thoughts about that? I get asked this all the time. Why in the fall and the wintertime do we see more viruses out there? I know. I think I asked you this when I first came up here to Dallas, but it's interesting. Uh, as, as you know, most people get sicker in the wintertime anyway, and there's more rhinoviruses and cold viruses that are always there. There is a predilection for flu virus to strike usually starting in October and peaking in January and February. No one's sure of the real reason for that. It may be the traveling, as Roger said, the handshaking, someone gets the flu and all of a sudden it just travels around. But in, in general, it's when it's cold. And one of the best myths, and I love this story, is I don't know if your mom ever told you this, but I know our mom did. You're going, to go, you're going right outside after you shower and it's cold outside, you're going to get sick. That's not what causes you. the flu. <laughs> that does not <laughs> cause the flu. <laughs> All right, so we, we all believe you should get the flu. Please get your flu shot if you haven't had one. Um, uh, Rainer, Roger, Crystal's right at the door. She's going to give me mine today. I haven't had mine yet, but I'm getting one right after this uh, telecast, this uh, blogcast. Have you had yours, Rainer? Yes, sir. In fact, I think uh, I ran into Crystal or Renee. Someone gave me the flu shot two days ago. That's right. How about you, Roger? Have you had your flu shot? I had mine, and it was given at the hospital. There was actually, at most of the hospitals, just interestingly, uh, there is lines of people. I had to wait in a line of 20 people, and I was joking with the lady that I was going to, I'm going to get the flu from the flu vaccine, and she goes, oh, are you serious? I go, no, ma'am. You know that truly. You can't get the flu from the flu vaccine. So I was having fun with the people in line, but uh, it, there was lines of people right now, they are very active and wanting to get the flu vaccine and be proactive this year. So thank you, Roger. Thank you, Ryder. Thank Please you. get your flu shot, everyone out there. Bye-bye.